And we are back with the second part of Shabbat service for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. This is February 20th, 2021, Adar 75781 on the Hebrew calendar. And we are on the Torah portion. We're going to continue the Torah portion, um, starting with the curtains in chapter 26 of Exodus. Moreover, you are to make the tabernacles the ten curtains of fine woven linen of blue, purple, and scarlet with cherubim. And again, I said the cherubim uh, means the glory beings. Made by the work of a skillful craftsman. The length of each curtain is to be 28 cubits, and the width of each curtain, 4 cubits. All the curtains are to have the same measure. Five curtains are to be coupled together one to another, and the other five curtains are to be coupled one to another. Also make loops of violet on the edge of the one curtain that is outermost in the first set, and do likewise within the edge of the curtain that is outermost, outermost in the second set. You are to make 50 loops in the first curtain and 50 loops on the edge of the curtain that is on the second set. The loops are to be opposite one another, then make 50 clasps of gold and couple the curtains one to another with the clasps so that the tabernacle may be one piece. You're to make curtains of goat hair for a tent over the tabernacle, 11 curtains in all. The length of each curtain is to be 30 cubits and the width of each curtain, 4 cubits. The 11 curtains are to have the same measurement. You're to couple five curtains by themselves and six curtains by themselves and double over the sixth curtain in the forefront of the tent. Then make 50 loops on the edge of the one curtain that is outermost in the first set along with 50 loops on the edge of the curtain that is outermost in the second set. Make 50 bronze clasps, put them into the loops and couple the tent together so that it may be one. As for the overhanging part that remains of the tent curtains, the half curtain that remains is to hang over the back of the tabernacle. The extra cubit on one side as well as the cubit on the other side which remains in the length of the curtains of the tent is to hang over the sides of the tabernacle on each side to cover it. You are to make a covering for the tent of ram skins dyed red and a covering of seal skin above. You are to make the framework of boards for the tabernacle from acacia wood standing upright. The length of each board is to be 10 cubits by one and a half cubits wide. There are to be supports in each board Join one to another. Do this for all the boards of the tabernacle. You are to make the 20 boards for the south side of the tabernacle and 40 silver bases underneath the 20 boards. Two bases go underneath one board for its supports and two bases under another board for its supports. Likewise, for the second side of the tabernacle, on the north side, there are to be 20 boards. With their 40 bases of silver, two bases go under one board and two bases under the next board. For the back part of the tabernacle westward, you are to make six boards. Make two boards for the corners of the tabernacle on the back side. They are also to be doubled at the bottom, and in the same way joined at the top by the first ring. It is to be this way for them both, and they will provide the two corners. So there will be eight boards with 16 silver bases, two bases under each board. Also make cross beams of acacia wood, five for the boards on one side of the tabernacle, five for the boards on the other side of the tabernacle, and five for the boards on the back part of the tabernacle to the west. The middle cross beam in the center of the boards will pass through from one end to end. From, I'm sorry, from end to end. Then overlay the boards with gold and make their rings with gold as holders for the cross beams and overlay the cross beams with gold. You are to raise up the tabernacle according to the plan which you were shown on the mountain. Make a fine woven linen curtain of blue, purple, and scarlet with cherubim. It is to be the work of a skilled craftsman. You are to hang it on four pillars of acacia overlaid with gold 
their hooks being made of gold at top four bases of silver. You are to hang the curtain under the clasp and bring the ark within the curtain of the testimony. The parakeet um, is the divided corner um, in the temple for the Holy of Holies. It's called the parakeet. The parakeet, and that is spelled P-A-R-O-K-H-E-T. Uh, this will divide for you between the holy place and the holy of holies. Then you are to put the atonement cover on the ark of the testimony in the holy of holies. You shall set the table outside the curtain and the menorah opposite the table on the side of the tabernacle toward the south. You are to put the table on the north side. For the entrance of the tent, also make a screen of blue, purple, and scarlet finely twisted linen, the work of a color weaver. You are also to make for this screen five pillars of acacia and overlay them with gold. Their hooks are to be made of gold and you are to cast five bases of bronze for them. Now chapter seven, uh, 27, I'm sorry, uh, covers the altar, the courtyard, and oil. Make the altar of acacia wood five cubits long and five cubits wide. The altar will be square and its height is to be three cubits. Make forms on the four corners of one piece. Overlay it with bronze. You are to make pots for it to take away ashes along with the shovels, basins, forks, and fire pans. Make all the utensils of bronze. Also make a bronze grating net for it. And on the net you are to make four bronze rings. And on the four corners. You are to place it under the ledge around the altar beneath so that the net may reach halfway up the altar. Make poles for the altar, poles of acacia wood, and overlay them with bronze. Its poles are to be put into the rings and on the two sides of the altar for carrying it. You are to make it with planks so that it is hollow. As it, is, as it has been shown to you in the mountain, they are to make it just so. You are also to make a courtyard for the tabernacle. For the south side, there are to be hangings for the courtyard of finely twisted linen, 100 cubits long. There are to be 20 pillars with 20 bronze bases, and the huts on the pillars along with their bands are to be made of silver. Likewise, for the north side in length, there are to be 100 cubits long hangings, uh, 20 pillars and 20 bronze bases, the hooks of the pillars, and their clasps are to be made of silver. Now for the width of the courtyard, on the west side, there are to be 50 cubits of hangings, 10 pillars, and 10 bases. The width of the courtyard on the east side is to be 50 cubits. The hangings on one side of the gate are to be 15 cubits with three pillars and three bases. For the other side, there is also to be 15 cubits of hangings with three pillars and three bases. For the gate of the courtyard, there is to be a 20 cubit curtain of blue, purple, scarlet, and finely twisted linen, the work of a color weaver, along with their four pillars and their four bases. The pillars of the courtyard are to be banded with silver, their hooks of silver, and their bases of bronze all around. The length of the courtyard is to be 100 cubits, and the width 50 throughout. The height is to be 50 cubits, with hangings of finely twisted linen with their bronze bases, all of the part of, all, all of the articles of the tabernacle for all the services there, along with all the pegs, including all the pegs of the courtyard, are to be bronze. This is the end of Parashat Teruma. So we're gonna do a quick recap of this, and I just want to mention um, the biblical measure. Uh, of cubit. Um, we've been hearing the measurements of, of 10 cubits, uh, various cubits um, to um, measure out the different things like the curtains of the, you know, of what the tabernacle was supposed to be. A cubit, one cubit is equal to 18 inches, which is a foot and a half. So when you're hearing um, all these measurements, uh, you can get a better grip uh, on how much that might have looked like. So when we're looking at uh, Parashat Teruma, uh, which trans tra the transliteration is the heave offering, 
which is also a free will offering. And we'll get into that a little bit later in the future when we're talking about the different offerings. Um, but we're going to um, recap here on the Torah portion. Um, and the portion of Teruma deals with the plans for the construction of the tabernacle. And this was God's portable temple while Benai Israel was in the desert. And the tabernacle would become the most, uh, uh, the most focus on the rest of the book of Exodus here, because they're gonna, we're gonna be talking more about it as we uh, go into next week, um, because we're gonna get into the priest garments and all of that stuff. Um, it was constructed. The tabernacle was constructed in the second year after the Exodus, after the Exodus out of Egypt. Uh, and it remained in use even after the people entered the Holy Land. Uh, so it was it was very important. And uh, the, uh, the Torah portion opens with God asking Moses to collect donations but from Benai Israel to build the temple. And he asked those who were generous of heart to give what they were moved to donate from the various riches which Benai Israel took with them after they... Uh, the exodus when they left egypt remember um as we had studied out um they had actually spoiled the egyptians um and they were gifted with uh various um materials um gold silver you name it um jewelries and and what have you um so this was all later meant to build the house of worship for god you know, as God tells Moses in the beginning uh, of this Torah portion, build me a sanctuary and I shall dwell in their midst. Um, this was all so, so um, God would dwell among Benaya Israel, enabling a relationship between them. He had really wanted a relationship with his chosen people. So um, this is all dealing with the holy vessels. Um, uh, beginning with the holy vessels, the ark, the table, and the lamp. And um, again, uh, God gives a specific list of materials needed for his tabernacle and then goes on to describe three of the primary vessels which would be set up inside the tabernacle, which is the ark of the covenant, the table of showbread, um, and some Bibles will say shewbread, and the lamp, which is known as the menorah. And the ark was to be built from three, three layers, a wooden box with both outer and inner gold boxes and to be topped with a crown of gold. And the cover for the ark was also to be of gold and topped with two cherubim. Um, and into this then the two tablets where the Ten Commandments were written on would be placed. And from there, God would, would meet with Moses. And the table was also to be made of wood covered in gold, surrounded by a gold crowned molding. molding. Um, so, um, and this wood was specifically mentioned in the Bible as we read it, of acacia wood. It was, to, uh, was supposed to also have shelves on which to place the showbread, as well as the utensils of gold for the services. And both the table and the ark were to have rings in which gold plated wooden poles would be placed for the purpose of transporting it uh, and the poles of the ark were never to be removed from their housings the lamp of menorah was to have seven branches each with knobs cups and flowers in their designs and three arms which should branch out from the central one on each side and it was to be a hammered work out of a single block of gold and its accompanying utensils were also to be made of pure gold um, and God showed Moses what the menorah was meant to look like in the vision on the mountain. Everything he showed him was on that vision of the mountain to the specifics. Um, he had to specifically uh, make sure um, that this was relayed to Benaiah Israel. And God would actually empower um, the workmen that were to do these things that were being shown to Moses too, by the way. The tabernacle building itself was to be constructed out of several parts. Its walls were to consist of planks with tabs on each end, and the tabs fit into silver sockets, which held every pair of adjacent planks together. 
three bars top, bottom, and center. Also secure the planks of each wall to each other. And the walls were to be covered with different curtains, 10 curtains of linen and wool, woven with a design of cherub, cherubim, 11 curtains with of goat hair, uh, a cover of red dyed ram skin, and a cover of seal skins. The curtains were to have hooks and loops to connect them to each other, and they were to be layered over the tabernacle walls with the 11th goat hair curtain overhanging the entrance. Between the main chamber of the tabernacle and the Holy of Holies, a partition was to be hung, made of the same twisted and woven wool and linen with a cherubim design. And the ark was to be positioned inside the Holy of Holies while the table and menorah sat in the main chamber. And a screen was to be placed at the entrance of the tabernacle made of gold-plated planks and covered with the same woven fabric. And the specific boards were made known to Moses. The courtyard, Moses was instructed in building the altar, which was to sit in the courtyard of the tabernacle. And the altar was to be a hollow box built of wood. And in this Bible, um, some Bibles say copper. In this Bible um, that we've just read, it's bronze. And the utensils, too, should be bronze. And it's to have four raised corners or horns, a base and a meshwork trim around its middle. Like the table and ark, it was to have wooden poles for carrying the altar, this time uh, covered in bronze. And the courtyard itself was to be demarcated by an open air enclosure made from linen curtains suspended between pillars. And the pillars were to have bronze sockets and hooks and bands of silver. At the entrance to the courtyard, an ornate screen of the same woven fabric described in the tabernacle covers will sit, allowing visitors to enter from either side. So this is the recapping, and it's very intricately and, and specifically spelled out for Moses. Um, he sees, um, he's actually shown this vision of the tabernacle on the mountain very specifically, the specific design to, for it to be replicated um, in real time on earth. So, um, so anyway... That is the end of the Torah portion. We're going to get into the half Torah um, right away. And um, actually, the half Torah this week is 1 Kings chapter 5, verses 12 through chapter 6, verses 16. So um, he also composed 3,000 proverbs, and his songs were. 1005 and this is talking about Solomon he also spoke about trees from the cedar in Lebanon to the hyssop that grows out of the of the wall and he spoke about beasts birds creeping things and fish people came from everywhere to hear the wisdom of Solomon from all kings of the earth who have heard of his wisdom and Hiram offers materials so here we go then Hiram King Hiram of Tyre sent his servants to Solomon, and when he heard that they had anointed him king in place of his father, for Hiram was also was always a friend of David. Uh, so Solomon sent word to Hiram, saying, You know how my father David could not build a house for the name of Adonai his God because of the wars around him on every side until Adonai put them under the soles of my feet. But now Adonai, my God, has given me rest on every side. There is neither adversary nor bad incident. So behold, I intend to build a house for the name of Adonai, my God, as Adonai spoke to my father, David, saying, Your son, whom I will set upon your throne in your place, he will build a house for my name. So now command that they cut cedars from Lebanon for me, my servants will be with your servants, and I will give you wages for your servants according to whatever you say. For as you know, there is none among us who knows how to cut timber like the Sidonians. When Hiram heard Solomon's word, words, he rejoiced greatly and said, Blessed be Adonai today who has given to David a wise son 
over the great people. So Hiram sent word to Solomon saying, I have heard the message that you sent to me and will do all you desire concerning the cedar and cypress timber. My servants shall bring them down from Lebanon to the sea and I will make them into rafts to go by sea to the place that you indicate to me. There I will break them up and you will carry them away. Then you will accomplish my desire by giving food for my household. So Hiram kept providing Solomon with cedar and cypress timber as much as he desired. And Solomon gave Hiram 20,000 measures of wheat for food for his household and 20 measures of beaten oil. Thus Solomon would give to Hiram year by year. Adonai gave Solomon wisdom as he promised him so that there was shalom between Hiram and Solomon, and the two of them cut a covenant. King Solomon also imposed forced laborers, laborers from all Israel. The levy was 30,000 men. He sent them to Lebanon in shifts of 10,000 a month. They would stay a month in Lebanon, then two months at home. Adoniram was over the forced labor. Solomon had 70,000 porters and 80,000 stonecutters in the mountains, besides Solomon's chief officers that were over the work, 3,300 who were supervised, who supervised the people who were doing the work. Then the king commanded, and they quarried great stones, costly stones, to lay the foundation of the house with cut stones. So Solomon's builders and Hiram's builders, along with the Gebelites, cut them and prepared the timber and stones to build the house. So this is actually the building of the temple, which we had the tabernacle, and now we're having the building of the temple. Now it came to pass 480 years after the children of Israel came out of the land of Egypt in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel in the month of Ziv, Z-I-V, which is the second month that he began to build Adonai's house. Now the house that King Solomon built for Adonai was 60 cubits long, 20 cubits wide, and 30 cubits high. So now remember, one cubit is a foot and a half. That is very big. <laughs> the porch in front of the sanctuary of the house was 20 cubits in length, corresponding to the breadth of the house, and its depth was 10 cubits from the front of the house. Also for the house, he made windows with artistic frames against the walls of the house. He built a side structure surrounding both the temple and the inner sanctuary. Thus he made side chambers all around. The lowest story was five cubits wide. The middle was six cubits wide. And the third was seven cubits wide. All around on the outside, he provided offset ledges in the wall of the house so that the beams would not be inserted into the walls of the house. For the house, while being constructed, was built of stone finished at the quarry with neither hammer, axe, nor any iron tool heard in the house during its construction. The doorway to the lowest story of the side chambers was on the right side of the house. They went up by winding stairs to the middle story and from the middle to the third. When he finished building the house, he covered the house with beams and planks of cedar. He built the stories of the side structure against the whole house, each five cubits high, and they were fastened to the house with timbers of cedar. Then the word of Adonai came to Solomon, saying, As for this house which you are building, if you walk in my statutes, execute my ordinances, and keep all my mitzvot, by walking in them, then I will establish my word with you, which I spoke to your father David. I will dwell among the children of Israel and will not for, and will not forsake my people Israel. That's the end of the half Torah. And I'm going to pause this now and come back for a quick uh, recapping of this. And um, then we're going to, um, actually the third part of this is going to be quite short. <laughs>